joined by Jason Vogel, our stormwater extension specialist, and we're going to install a rain barrel. Jason, welcome to Oklahoma Gardening. Nice to see you. Now, of course, there's a variety of commercially available rain barrels, but we're going to build a do-it-yourself version. What do we need to get started on this? What are the materials we're going to use? So first off, you need your barrel. Mm -hmm. um, this particular barrel we have, we bought at a farm supply store. It's an olive barrel. You can use um, different food grade barrels or chemical barrels, things like um, um, pool, pool chemicals, things like that. We also have um, various PVC pipe. We have a PVC pipe here with the cap, some vinyl tubing, mm -hmm. some various tees and overflow pipe, and then our spigot and some other supplies for us to to hook the pipes together. And these are all really easy to find from the hardware store, pretty much. Exactly, so you can get everything that we have here from your local hardware store or farm supply store. Okay, excellent. Well, before we start working on our rain barrel, how would you size a barrel for the home setting? So a rain barrel, in general, isn't enough water to water your lawn consistently. So generally the rain barrel is sized by how big you want to have it beside your house. Okay. Um, you, can, you can either get water for your drink watering can or else you can wa water a small area next to the rain barrel with uh, drip irrigation. So we're somewhat limited by aesthetics and as we'll see when we start putting ours in today, we're limited by space as to where we're going to put the barrel. Now before we get uh, the barrel installed, we need to have a firm foundation for it to sit on. Exactly. So a barrel like this is 55 gallons. This is going to weigh almost 400 pounds. Mm -hmm. So you need to have a firm foundation. You're going to you're going to have it be getting a little bit wet underneath it by by nature because it's uh, dealing with an area where there's a gutter. So this is going to weigh over 400 pounds. We need a firm foundation, and we also need to get it high enough to either fit our watering can underneath mm -hmm. or high enough to have enough pressure on the water so that the water will be forced through your drip irrigation tubing. And the higher it is off the ground, the more pressure uh, will be built up to move exactly. that water. Exactly, and then the, the farther that you can move water along your drip irrigation tube. Okay. Well, we're going to start putting this one together, and uh, we want to start from the bottom and move our way up, right? Exactly. So the first thing we're going to do is attach the spigot. This particular rain barrel we bought, and it was pre-drilled, but mm -hmm. if you buy one or um, get one donated to you that is not pre-drilled, you can either just drill your hole and seal it really good um, with some O-rings, or you can take your tap and die and put your threads onto it. Okay. So this one right here has the threads in it. Um, we're going to attach our spigot, put our O-ring on the inside, and then attach it with this pipe connector. Okay, and you want to make sure that it's a real secure fitting because every time you turn this on and off, you're putting a bit of pressure on there, so we want it nice and secure. Well, our spigot's in place, and when you were talking about materials for the rain barrel, something to point out is this one has a nice big opening, which made it easy for us to get inside and work with uh, installing that spigot. Exactly, and later on it'll make it easier for you to get in there and maintain it, clean it out mm -hmm. as well. Okay, so what's the next step we need to do? So the next thing we need to do is get a way for the water to get into our rain barrel. Mm -hmm. So we have a one and a half inch inlet tube, so we drilled a hole that was mm -hmm. just slightly larger than one and a half inches so that, so that we can put that tubing into that hole and the water can get into the rain barrel. Okay, so right now our rain barrel, we're going to set that aside because there's a few other things we need to do as we get ready. What's the next step here? So next we're going to mm -hmm. build what we call our first flush diverter. And what does that do? So our first flush diverter basically collects the water that is the first water to come off the roof and it's mm -hmm. washing all of the dust, the bird droppings, the other things that have settled onto the roof since the last rainfall. Okay, and it'll those will collect uh, before the rest of the water goes into the rain barrel. Yep, so it's going to collect here in our, in our tube, which this is the bottom of our first flush diverter, is simply a PVC tube that we've painted, mm -hmm. PVC pipe that we have painted. And we have a cap on the bottom that mm -hmm. we've drilled a small hole into, and we're going to put a, a small tube onto that, and the water will slowly drain out of this first flush diverter mm -hmm. after the rain stops, uh, and we'll divert that away from our foundation. Okay, so now we need to connect our water tubing to the top of this, correct? Yep, so mm -hmm. we're going to take a, a T mm -hmm. and we'll attach this right to the top of our first flush diverter. Okay, and I have the intake. So this is that intake tube that we were looking at that goes into the top of our rain barrel. So the water, once it fills up here, it's going to flow In down into our rain barrel. Into our inlet tube and into the mm -hmm. rain barrel. Okay. So once the rain barrel gets completely full, 
the rain barrel's full, the water will come up this inlet tube and then continue to fill up our PVC pipe. And then we have another tube here that we're going to put an overflow tube on because it's going to rain a lot more than 55 gallons onto your, onto mm -hmm. your rooftop. So okay. we have to be able to do something with the rest of that water. So here we have a, a PVC T, a couple connectors and an adapter up on the top. And this, into this we're going to put a, a two inch mm -hmm. um, overflow pipe. And this two inch overflow pipe will, onto the end of this will mm -hmm. attach a flexible hose that we will want to once again run away from our foundation so that we don't have water on our foundation. Okay, and this one's larger than our water intake. Is there a reason for that? Yes, because you have to be able to have this tube handle all of the water that is coming through your gutter. Okay. Um, so, yeah. so this tube is larger. This doesn't necessarily have to do this. This just has to convey water into our rain barrel. Okay, and we have one more piece. You want to grab that and tell us what that's for? You bet. So this is an adapter mm -hmm. that goes from our PVC tubing onto our gutter. We simply bought this at the hardware store, and uh, you just slip that into there. This okay. adapter that we have mm -hmm. um, is the adapter from our thick-walled PVC to our thinner-walled um, ad adapter uh, PVC tubing. And then there's, this part comes in different sizes to attach to different size scattering as well. That's correct. Okay, well let's start to install this.